Welcome back to the AL.com Film Room. I'm Matt Scalisi here with Cole Kublik, our Auburn football analyst. We've been taking a look this week at Auburn's loss to Texas A&M. We looked at the defense earlier in the week. Let's take a look at Auburn's offense, which really had a, a pretty productive day. But as you've mentioned uh, so many times in recent weeks, some mistakes really ended up getting to Auburn in this game. Pretty productive? Was it? How many it was, yards did they have? It was quite productive. It was very, very, very productive. Yeah. Made some mistakes, but very, very productive. Matt, you know we've, we've talked a lot about Ricardo Lewis, Jet Sweep, hitting the perimeter on some nice runs the last few weeks. Kind of started in that Louisiana Tech game, and it's gotten a little bit more going each and every week. So you see Lewis here going to come on that jet sweep, fake to him, and it's just kind of a zone read back under. But you're adding a power element by pulling the guards. Nice job by Chad Slade here, going to come and get a little kick out block. And then you'll see Devontae Danzi going to come up and get a little bit on his guy. But we point out some receivers here for making good blocks. I want to point this kid out right here, Melvin Ray, obviously with an injury to Duke Williams, somebody who I think has a chance to really do some nice things for this team the rest of the season. Watch this block right here. This is on an outside linebacker, so a big body. And this just goes to show you that some of these Auburn receivers – now this kid's like 26 years old too, been playing baseball for a while, so we're not going to – it's not like he's 16. But at the end of the day – a nice job by a receiver, something you know they don't like to do. Damian Craig's done a great job with these guys, forcing them to be physical, forcing them to block, basically saying you're not going to play in this offense if you don't block. But this, to me, is really the reason that this play goes. Boom, 82, just a nice block there. I mean, Penn's a linebacker, and then Cameron Bernardo's pain. We always tell you, we get you second, third level, make one miss, and you'll get a score. This dude right here again, who's been tweeting about this kid having a bad game? Look at 11. Eight, nine yards down the field. That's your SEC freshman defensive player of the year right there. He's riding out. But we're going to tweet about how we don't like 11 this week. Nice job. We'll run it back one more time and just watch it real quick. We'll kind of get that wide angle. And there you see Danzy's going to pull around. Just give me a little bit on those guys. You don't need a ton when you pull. Face them up. Force them to maneuver around you. Your back can make the move. And here when you see this look, you see 11 downfield, 53 is coming around, a nice block, 82 right there really walls it off and gives that play the seam that it needs. Just a nicely executed play by everybody up front for the Auburn offense. Matt, pass pro was actually pretty good for the Auburn offensive line most of the game and actually went to some straight drop back pass, which is much more difficult on an offensive line than play action pass or slide protection, which we've seen a lot of in Gus Malzahn's offense Going to add again a little jet sweep show here to kind of keep the backside at bay. But we talked about numbers earlier in the week. We mentioned the defense for Auburn. And you just look one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine guys up around. I mean, maybe even 10 guys up around the box. You know, you probably got man coverage here, though, so you don't have to worry about those guys. Too much to attempt to run unless you are going to try to go to the perimeter. We'll see a little play action fake here. But like we talked about with Kyle Allen earlier in the week, when you come out of that play action, you need to be decisive and you need to know if option one's not there, maybe option two, and then you got to go. Either throw the football away or exit the pocket immediately. It doesn't help that you have an elite player up front that's going to shut this play down and collapse the pocket very quickly. We'll get a much better view from it from the back end. If you don't think this kid right here, if you think all he is is just an edge rusher and a speed guy, I'll show you right now how he can be effective in different ways. Nick Marshall is going to run a little play action here. Pretty good job up front. Need a little bit more out of the left guard here. You'll see some late penetration come there. Don't lean. Don't get your head down. Cannot overextend and get on your toes because then you're not back balanced, able to move laterally and stay in front of your defender. But again, watch this young man, Miles Garrett, close the space after he realizes that this is a fake. There's the fake, and then boom. Nick Marshall thinks he has plenty of time. All of a sudden, that pocket collapses. Just not a lot of time to operate with an elite rusher on the edge. This will give you a good look, too. Thinks he has time, and that pocket immediately breaks down. Has to get rid of that football or have an option route that you feel kind of like that back shoulder fade we saw earlier. Maybe you give that a shot, but Nick Marshall knows right there. That's just Nick Marshall trying to make a play, so you don't really get onto him too hard for that, but he has to know immediately. If they don't bite on that play action, that football needs to go in the stands. Point out a couple individuals here with nice blocks because that's what we like is guys that have nice blocks. This is a tough block here to ask your H-back to get outside, 
Now remember, hat needs to be play side. So if you're lining your defender up in front of you and the play's going to the left, your helmet needs to be to the left of his helmet. Helmet needs to be play side. That's basically getting a defender reached. It's going to be a nice job here by Brandon Fulce, number 11, who everyone's been talking about all week, had a terrible game. I disagree. Thought he had one of his better games in an Auburn uniform. Another wide receiver going to come get a physical block. We know Sammy Coates. He, he's a guy that we've seen do this all year. He doesn't mind mixing it up with DBs and linebackers and going to get a block. A couple other good blocks. Chad Slade's going to pull around with a nice block. And this is just really kind of how you draw it up. It's a zone read with kind of a power element to it. So it's a little bit of a different run. You're getting more guys out front. No, you're going to hand it off. Two guards pull around. There you see Danzy get a little push. Slade walls his defender off. And again, Cameron Arnold's pain. We get you second, third level. Make one miss and you can take it to the house. Excellent execution. Zone read is the bread and butter. It's what Gus Malzahn, Rhett Lashley, Nick Marshall, they make their living on this play. And you see seven in the box. Just a base 4-3 look. Nothing special. Nothing crazy. So Nick Marshall is going to be reading this defensive end. Looks like he's playing a little tight to begin with. So he's removed down almost head up with Avery Young at right tackle, which Nick Marshall from a pre-snap recognition immediately should say, good chance I'm going to be able to keep this ball and get the edge. So we need a little bit out here, which you're not going to get. You're going to get that bubble screen fade because we saw the pop pass off the zone read a lot, something that's keeping these guys at bay. But your defender's going to have to run with that. If he doesn't, you're going to be able to come back and hit it later. This is that extra defender that Kansas State, Louisiana Tech, a lot of other teams have been sitting down to the box and making life miserable on Nick Marshall. Key block right here. Guess who? Number 11. <laughs> Once again, watch the patience by this guy. He understands if I run downfield and attempt this block right away, there's a good chance that that defender after initial contact is going to bust loose and disrupt this play. So what do you do? You wait, you wait, you wait. And when the play finally develops, get that hat play side, wall off your defender, and develop a lane. Really nice job here by Brandon Fulson. We'll look at it just a few times. But watch 11, patient, patient, wait on it. Keep that head play side and run with him. That really opens up a lot for Nick Marshall to do a lot of damage. And we'll come back and watch it again. It's just a nice read by Marshall. And you see how the zone read can make life, make life miserable on these guys right here. They have to play that because they, this is your SEC's leading rusher right here. you got to make sure that guy's not going to beat you first. You're thinking, well, I've I got all these guys over here that can take care of the quarterback. That's what my defensive end is supposed to do. Defensive end crashes. He takes himself out of the play for the most part. Nice read by Marshall. Seeing the defensive end play flat, it results in a big play for the Auburn Tigers. Matt, second and six, we talked about winning first down is always key. Second and six, a nice down to throw on, in my opinion, because when you run the ball the way that Auburn does, a lot of people probably thinking you want to get yourself in an easy third down situation, try to push towards the sticks a little bit. It's really soft coverage up here up top, but what do you see is no safety help on the back end. That's what Nick Marshall's looking at, and he's thinking, if I can get a little double move here, more than likely, I'm going to be able to have a one-on-one. -on -one. I can shoot a pass in there really quick. Nice protection up front. Not showing blitz initially, but with this guy down here, you don't have to blitz a whole lot. That's kind of the difference between the two defenses. When 15's rushing the passer, you don't have to bring four or five extra guys. Nick Marshall, great command of the pocket. This is one of those straight dropbacks that we talked about that Auburn hadn't done a lot of this year, and they do it this time. Watch the little pump fake from Marshall. Gives a little shoulder right there. That just does enough for the DB. And we'll get a nice look here at the route from Quan Bray and just how he breaks the defender down. Just need that quick move. If your eyes are on the quarterback, you see the fake. If they're on Quan Bray, obviously you see him break down. You're giving him the cushion, so you want to react to the short pass. Nice, nice throw from Nick Marshall. Really pinpoints that pass, puts it on the money for the Auburn touchdown. All right, Cole, a big day for the Auburn offense. We've seen a lot of great plays uh, out of that unit so far, but there's one play obviously everybody's really talking about on Monday. Uh, it's, it's this fumble right near the goal line. Uh, you know, a lot, of, a lot of different aspects to look sure. at in this play. I'm really curious what your take is on this. Yeah, let's take a look here. There's so many things happening really and truly, and I kind of agree with Gus Malzahn and what he said after the game. Uh, uh, some reporters asking him, why would you even risk the zone read down here? This is what they do. 
This is who they are. I mean, this would literally be like 95 Nebraska getting on the one-yard line against that Florida defense and Tom Osborne saying, well, we ain't running the triple option. That's what you do. You, right. you, you know, you, you dance with the girl that you brought, so to speak. And I don't, I'm okay with this because there's no telling how many thousands of times they've worked on this mesh. They, they should have it down. It should not. It's obviously not a play that Gus Malzahn has any concern about. We have multiple angles here, and we'll take a look at it. And really, I, I, it's, there's so many directions you can go as to how and why this takes place. And we'll slow it down, and we'll kind of look at some different things. But a good look right here at the football, it's going to pop out there. Now, in, in my opinion, what I believe is off this fake, Nick Marshall is eyeballing this defender here, which you got a guard and a tackle that are working up to this defender over here. So key is you can't turn your shoulders to the right if you know you got to come back left. You have to stay square. Get, if you get a push on in there and bounce off to your linebacker, that's okay. And when you're down towards the goal line, there has to be a mental understanding from a pre-snap read standpoint. Before the ball is snapped, we're on the one. The linebacker is not going to stand in the middle of the end zone. He's going to come up and try to stop the play. So to me, when I watch this play, I feel like Cameron Artis Payne is expecting to get the football. This might be what is telling Nick Marshall to pull this ball back. And some people would see this and they say, well, if he has a defender that's not being touched, why would he pull it out and get hit? Well, you pull it out because you want that guy to take the hit. Cameron Artis Payne takes the hit, and you should have a clean alley into the end zone. So, obviously, if Cameron Artis Payne is seeing this guy, he might be thinking, well, I've got an open lane this way. I'm getting the football. And that's kind of where some of the discombobulation comes out. But you'll see how this football kind of pops up first, right there, off the hip of Cameron Artis Payne. Now, easy right here to say, well, if this guy's taken care of, he might catch this ball in the air. He might not even make it to the ground. Nick Marshall can just pivot and go get the ball. Don't, and no should-haves in football. So, obviously, you credit this Texas A&M defender for coming up, making a play, getting a hit on Nick Marshall. He doesn't cause the fumble. The ball was already out. Of course, ends up being a traumatic play for the Auburn Tigers. All of this right here, to me, it doesn't matter. Don't be a penalty vulture. Don't be somebody who goes back and says, what if, oh, my gosh, the referees, they're out to get us, and we should have had it. What? No, at the end of the day, there was plenty of points to be had in this game. There were balls that were dropped. There were penalties that were committed. A lot of opportunity to win this football game. It never comes down to one play as to who or why someone wins. This is a great angle as to that defender that's coming loose. And this is our defender right here. So if we go back and we take a look at, at this front right here, you got double team with these two working up to this guy. You're manned up here. You're manned up here. We're probably going to turn him loose. You can't block them all. So we're working a double team here over. Now, we have to go sit down in a meeting with Coach Grimes and say, is this the right look and did they have the right call? That, to me, I, I can't tell you that. But I, do, I can tell you that's how this play is attempting to be blocked. So when you, when, you say, when you say those guys are blocking up to this middle linebacker, you mean at some point somebody should release off of this defensive sure, yeah, lineman it's, and come it's, block it's, the middle I mean, linebacker? It's simple zone concepts. Right. You're manned up here. These two have these two right there, and these two have these two right here. Right. 42 is included in that equation. Now, what makes it difficult is kind of how 42 is somewhat disguised here, and you can really see the eyes of Nick Marshall. This angle is the one that tells me that Marshall's plan was to hand this ball off, and then he sees 42 kind of come free. And maybe, maybe, we'll never know, Maybe Nick Marshall sees 42 free and decides, I better pull that football because my running back's going to take a shot. I don't want to risk him getting hit and putting this ball on the ground. I'll just go ahead and run it in, which technically could be the right move. Mm -hmm. Again, we, we, we don't know exactly what was going through his mind, but we'll run this through kind of slow motion here. You can see the eyes of Nick Marshall right there, kind of see 42 come free. and Maybe you see him kind of late, still extended, thinking to himself, I need to pull this ball out. Now the ball's loose. So it's not that that guy causes the fumble. The ball is loose, but you'll see 42, an excellent job of finishing the play. Ball loose right there. And again, I go back to if 42 is neutralized here, you have a great opportunity to get that fumble. So 
All things that you can go back and you can say, what if this, what if that? Really and truly, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. What matters is you put the football on the ground. You can never point to one individual play and say, that guy's the reason that we lost. You can go back to the Iron Bowl last year. You can't point to a kicker and say, that's why we lost. Or a guy on a field goal team that doesn't make a tackle and say, that guy's why we lost. It's just not real. The reason that you lose games or you make the same mistakes that you've been making for two and three years. You don't finish plays. You don't finish blocks. You turn the football over. You have stupid penalties. You drop balls. You don't locate balls in the air, and you don't make tackles. It comes down like we're looking at right here and like we looked at earlier in the week. You win football games with blocking and tackling. What do I always tell you? Football's what? Simple game. It's easy. Yeah. Football's easy. It's not hard. Gus Malzahn does all this and that and puts him over here and he goes every direction. At the end of the day, football's easy. Block, tackle, don't turn it over, and don't get penalized. And you're going to win a lot of football games. That's it for this week on the AL.com Film Room. For Cole Kublik, I'm Matt Scalisi. Join us next week when we'll take a look at the Auburn-Georgia game. At the end of the day, football's easy. Block, tackle, don't turn it over, and don't get penalized. And you're going to win a lot of football games.